This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is October 13th, 2022. Jonathan Osborne here. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. Dad squared, I think it is, right? Dad times two now? What's da- going on, Daddy bro? squared. Daddy. Yeah. Daddy squared. What's yeah. up, bro? How are you? How's the baby? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. He's great. He he really spoiled us first couple nights. You know, he, we had him on Sunday at like two in the morning. Uh, got in the hospital at one, had him at two. It was crazy. Uh, one of the, not one of the craziest experience that I've ever been a part of in my life. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, he'd been sleeping great. And then last night was the first night where he was like, nah, I'm getting my days and nights confused. I'm going to stay up for like four hours. So that was good. Um, but nah, he's great. Uh, my, my daughter getting to be a big sister has been a challenge, but also the sweetest thing ever. She just wants, it's always, you know, hands out and talking about baby Cole and holding him and, that sort of thing. So cries when she doesn't get to it's been, it's been awesome, man. But uh, I'm listen, I'm just glad we we're able to make the stars align that I could be on this show tonight. Shout out to my parents. Also kind of like pulling weight, Lauren's parents pulling weight as we kind of bounce this, this two child thing perk of being back in Florida for sure. But being able to record tonight with our special guest, we'll get to that in a minute, but I have to say this because you pulled on my heartstrings a little bit. Now I'm thinking about my kids. I always say the thing that I am most proud of in my entire life is how much my kids love each other. Like Mm. they're just always like playing together and just hugging on each Mm. other and telling each other how much they love them. And um, I I get emotional on this pod right now. This is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. This is what you've done to me. Mm. This is what having kids does to you. I used to be this like tough, cool guy and now I'm a (laughs) freaking loser. But, uh, but yeah, man, that's awesome. We're super, super happy for you. I know all the listeners are super happy for you. Everybody like threw you know you their love on on social media and stuff. So we're super happy to have baby Cole, not named after Cole Anthony, by the way. Like let's just let's make Back. that clear. Yeah, nothing against Cole, just not named after him. Right. So well, Luke, uh, you know, alluded to the fact that we have a very very special episode for you guys. Um, I feel like we say this all the time now, but this is one of my favorite episodes that we've ever done. This was so much fun. We got to sit down with Orlando Magic shooting guard, the Human Torch himself. Terrence Ross. Uh, we talked about everything. Honestly, we talked about the Young Magic roster. Uh, we talked about you know like the New Jersey leak that came out. We got his opinion on that. Um, we the plan. T- we talked about the plan. We talked about we talked about Spider Man after we record. We talked a little UFC with Terrence Ross. Just super super dope guy. Um, he he looks reju- rejuvenated. I know we're gonna talk a little bit about the Memphis game. Um, because this we we went with Terrence like 35, 40 minutes. Because this is yeah. such a jam packed episode. Um, Friday, obviously, the Cavaliers game is coming up. After that, when we record on Sunday, we're gonna do like a whole preseason recap, looking forward to the regular season, and we'll talk more about the Memphis game in like a little bit of depth. Before we get to that, folks, coming up October 14th, seven o'clock versus the Cavs, we're having our preseason night. Um, if you haven't purchased tickets, uh, I think at this point it's probably too late to do so. For those of you that did purchase tickets, if you want to meet up and hang out before the game, I'm going to be hanging out at Big Storm, Big Storm Brewery, which is connected to Amway. Even if you didn't purchase tickets, by the way, if you didn't use our link, please still come to Big Storm. Oh, yeah. If, yeah, hang if out. you didn't, even if you're not sitting with us, if you're coming to the game, just yeah. come say what's up at Big Storm. I'm going to be there probably around like six o'clock, I'm guessing. Um, and then if you are sitting with us, like, I want to make it a point the moment that we walk out of Big Storm as we're walking through Amway. I want to try to get everybody coming into the building. I want them to feel our energy and the passion that we have for this team. And I just want everybody to be ready to go crazy for our team this final preseason to get ready for everybody. So again, if you're going to be at the game uh, on Friday, 7 o'clock against the Cavs, I'm going to be at Big Storm at like 6 o'clock, kind of like hanging out there. So come through, say what's up. Uh, If you're sitting you know, with me, going to be super excited to meet all you guys so it's going to be a lot of fun and then so that's our final preseason game but the season opener the magic's first game of the year they'll be on the road to take on the detroit pistons on october 19th that game starts at seven o'clock 
But at 6.30, we're going to be at Elixir in downtown Orlando. Elixir is located at 9 West Washington Street. And they're, we're partnering with the Orlando Magic for this. We're partnering with Michelob Ultra. Michelob Ultra is going to be doing $4 16-ounce bottles. So if you like to enjoy a nice cold one like yours truly, come on out. $4 is going to get you a 16-ounce Michelob Ultra. Again, we're partnering with the Orlando Magic. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure that you guys swing through we, um, and hang out that night. We also have, uh, I, I, I'm pretty certain we can talk about this already. We have a special guest that will be at Elixir that night, Jonathan. Do we? Do, do you want to do talk more about to... that, Luke? Because I, I honestly forgot about that in the midst of Terrence Ross and you having a baby. Yes, the Magic beating so, the Grizzlies. We were told uh, by you know the Magic that there's a, a few talking points that we can add when we talk about the Elixir and things that they've lined up. Uh, special guest Bo Outlaw, also like raffling goat. off an an autograph basketball, uh, a ticket giveaway, Jonathan, for opening night against the Celtics on October 22nd. And they're going to be doing trivia during uh, quarter breaks. So just a, a few other things to add incentive even to, to coming out to that watch party, uh, you know, as we cheer on the Magic against their in their first game of the year at, uh, you know, Detroit. Lots of good things. You get to hang out with Magic fans. You get to meet Bo Outlaw. Potentially, there's going to be giveaways, drink specials. Again, Elixir 9 West Washington Street, Orlando, starting at 630 on Wednesday, October 19th. Luke. There was a, a little bit of a leak this uh, this week in terms of the Orlando Magic City jerseys. Uh, they've come out. If you haven't been able to take a look at those, uh, you can really look at you know um, any you know, of our uh, you know, social media accounts. Actually, I think the only place that we tweeted the leak was actually Twitter. So if you mm-hmm. want to go to our Twitter, and it's all over the place, really. I'm sure it's on the Orlando Magic subreddit, I think. Uh, but Luke, it's like black jerseys, black and navy blue trim. The pattern on the jersey, on the black jersey, is kind of like a chain link fence, kind of. And then a lot of people said this. You were the first person that I heard say this. The font Orlando across the chest looks very similar to the New Orleans Pelicans font that they have. I don't know that it's exactly the same, but it's definitely the same vibe. And then this is, to me, this is the worst part of the jersey. We still have the same font for the numbers Hmm. that we have on like the icon and the association jerseys. You can't mix up the font on the chest like that and then go with these super sterile numbers. It just looks ridiculous. But what are your thoughts yeah. on the jersey? I I will share. I agree. I, I agree with your that sentiment for sure. Um, I I uh, listen. Anything was going to be a step up. L- <laughs> literally anything. Um, from the orange. So, yes, from the orange. So I I like it. I I don't. I don't hate it at all. I saw a picture of it, you know, actually photoshopped on, obviously, to a player, and it looks good. I, I thought that it lo- it looked even better for sure on somebody, as is usually the case with case with jerseys. With our guest Terrence Ross, obviously, as you guys know, you've read the title. You know, no no need to beat around the bush here. Terrence Ross kind of uh, alludes to those jerseys and and what he can kind of provide some confirmation for us so the leaks are true we you know that that's kind of my take on it i i just like it like i'm like a genuinely just relieved that that they're better than than you know last year we're ditching the orange i don't mind the medieval font but like also why um i know there's speculation but i also just like as to why but i don't I mean, nobody sees that and they're like, oh, I know exactly why. Like at least orange was like, it's a city color. Like it's Orlando. It's 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 in Orlando. So this is the color of Orlando. The medieval thing, uh, that font, it's fine. It's a little weird, but I'd say that's really my only gripe about it, I would say. Yeah, whenever they have like the official announcement of these jerseys, there's always a press release that goes with it. And they'll go through like why they did certain elements of the jersey, like I'm sure we'll even hear something about the navy blue. Like if I had one like other than the numbers cuz I just think it it just looks ridiculous. It just it's just a clash of styles. Like and and I know it's a Nike thing. I know Nike is like okay, yeah, you can do a different font, but your jersey numbers have to stay the same. To me that's ridiculous. Like Nike is just dropping the bag hard by forcing you to do this. The jersey will look so much nicer if the font styles were uniform. You know, they're if they're matching, they're going to look a lot better and it's just going to feed into you know, if if they're trying to go for like a certain theme, 
they're like ripping you out of that illusion like with those numbers you're like okay i kind of see what's going on here okay i see see the chain link fence maybe that's like some kind of male armor i don't know okay maybe this is like some medieval font and what the hell are these numbers like it just it just really ruins it for you you think it's an ode the i got it you think it's an ode to the medieval times experience in orlando it's a and really i went on a field trip there once i'm gonna go (laughs) no but what I will say, outside of the numbers, the thing for me is the navy blue. Like, and I know we have blue on all the other jerseys, like the magic blue. But I did. I, I put it. a little filter on there, and you know, made it closer to the magic blue. And to me, if that's the if that was the colors, like boom, I'm there. Like, yeah, the navy does look clean, but to me, it's like, all right, like we did the orange that had nothing to do with the magic. We had the gray that had nothing to do with the magic, and now we've got the navy blue that, like, so far has nothing to do with the magic. So, also it's a more than the orange. More than the orange, the anthracite gray is probably the biggest L in like magic jerseys. I, the orange was bad, and I know that we talk about that when we mention those jerseys because it's very obviously predominant and uh, freaking highlighter. But the 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 gray man, I am just that is awful. I, I hope to never see it again. Well, the gray last year with the orange pinstripes and the orange gradient on the side on the TV to me, they always looked brown like you could you weren't even sure if it was gray they just looked brown and they didn't look good to me but um people are hating on the font like my thing is people are like oh they need to be bold they need to try new things well they tried something new and now you guys don't like it what do you want like pick what do you want them to do you want them to be bold or you want them to do the same thing like over and over and over again i don't think the font is that bad some people really don't like them i agree with you i saw the the photoshop i think it was on paolo i think they photoshopped it on paolo Now, I don't I know so. that we've seen the shorts yet, and they kind of mocked up the shorts on that design, so I don't know how accurate that is. Um, but yeah, for me, like the jerseys, they're not incredible, but I also don't think they're bad. Am I going to buy one? Uh, I, I don't know. I already pre-ordered um, the other the statement jersey, so I don't know that I'm going to get another jersey this year. I'm, I might, they could I, be I might do it. I might do it for uh, the sake of I don't have a Palo jersey yet. I haven't pre-ordered. I haven't done any of that. So if if Paolo is like balling out too, like and I just want a jersey that he wore in his rookie year, like that sort of thing, I might have to do it because I don't hate it and it's different. We'll see what so, happens. We'll we'll see. Yeah, I, I think of guys on the team right now that I really like that I don't have a jersey of. It would probably be Wendell and Jalen. So I mean, it's been a while since I bought a Ji jersey, but I've already had I already have two Ji jerseys and. Please, God, I hope we're going to see him sometime this season. But, mm. um, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe I could be talked into buying one of the jerseys. Maybe of the I, get a, I, Wendell. When Maybe Daddy, I get a Wendell. When Daddy's I never a, a bad, you know, a, Luke and I, I had a, a fantasy jersey. draft tonight with, uh, you know, we don't want to name drop. We don't like to brag, but our friends from Through the Wire and the Pick Aside podcast, <laughs> you know, our boys, Kenny Beachum, Pee Wee to Plug, you know, some of those guys, you might have heard of them. Maybe not. But we did our fantasy draft with them tonight. Yeah. And like in the fourth or fifth round, I pulled the trigger on Wendell Carter Jr. And I was like, I know Luke is going to hate this pick. I was looking, I was legitimately comparing stuff and I was about to pull the trigger on Wendell. Yeah. So I needed a big, and I needed a guy that was going to get me rebounds and points. And he's going to do that this year. So yeah, he's I was a little give you some assists you. as well. He's going to give you the occasional block. He's going to give you whatever you want. Okay. Honest. Anyways. Uh, in further magic news, uh, the magic wave, Jake Dra- uh, Drake Jeffries, sorry, the D and the J always get me mixed up one after the other. Drake Jeffries, after signing him Monday, so they wave him on Wednesday, and they sign Simi Shitu. Again, this is the end of the preseason. The magic are just trying to get a look at as many I can't guys wait. as they can. I can't wait for the nicknames. Um, I you I'm know what I too. probably could wait for these nicknames. <laughs> I'm sure people are going to get pretty creative with them. But if uh if Tuesday's game was any indication against Memphis Grizzlies, we're not going to see a lot of these like end of the bench guys. Um, you know, in the final preseason game coming up on uh, Friday. But uh, but we'll see. We'll see if uh, Simi Shitu sees the floor Friday night. Okay, before we talk about this Memphis game, Luke. We need to go ahead and shout out the folks that make every single episode possible. 
our patrons. So you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. That's where you can partner financially with the show and get an array of benefits like jumping on Zoom calls with us once a month. We also give away free t-shirts every single month. We have a Discord channel that you can join as well. Uh, again, three separate tiers. And we, we've we lately just been so blessed, um, really from a number of our patrons. You know, a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, Fuchsia. And then it was, you know, Juan Geraldo. It was our boy Wiffle. But now we have another patron that stepped up to the plate, taking advantage of that 15% discount on an annual membership to our Patreon. Our boy Jay with Magic Player History this week stepped up and purchased the next year of membership in our Hall of Fame tier. So a big shout out to Jay. Um, just yeah. super excited that he's in our Patreon community. We just love talking to that dude. If you don't follow him on social media, uh, you can find him Magic Player History uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. Nobody knows more about Magic Player History than Jay. Like I'm very confident in saying that. And we're just so appreciative to him for his support. And really to all of our patrons. Uh, we shout out all of our brand new patrons every single time we get a new one. And we also shout out all of our Hall of Fame tier patrons uh, every episode. And we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to start with our boys in the Northeast. The Court Cousins, Armin, Carson Tulo, Jonathan Borges, Norm L, our boy Magic Player History, Bailey Wiffle, Mike Salapong, Franz Goda for show, Ryan Singh the Distract. I don't know how my co-host is going to feel about this. Luke's mom. I'm Ron Burgundy, Pierre A, Migzors, Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Lil Penny, Drum, Danimal, Dutto 15, Bobby Skinner, Nate Donnelly, Goaty 93, Teddy Sylvia, the real Luke's mom, Breadhead, Brian Leggins, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, and Juan Geraldo. Thank you so much to all of our patrons. Luke, how does that one patron, how does that make you feel? I got to ask. Listen, I, I've, I've heard patrons do some pretty crazy things. Pick a side podcast who we talked about earlier in terms of our fantasy basketball draft if you hear them go through their list dude if you hear them do a manscaped read oh my goodness oh it's all it's always comedy for sure with them but their patreon names people are always changing those those names on patreon just to throw off the hook i really jonathan reads them every week so if you guys want to like that's hilarious won't say that we won't censor some you, of there them there is a it, line but, that i will draw i promise yeah you. yeah i promise the, you. pick a side those boys don't draw any lines no. and it's hilarious but but yeah we're, we're trying to you know stay within uh some lines for sure um but yeah no nah, i mean luke's mom like that it's funny i always love your mom joke so like i appreciate it all right luke let's talk about this memphis game so Tuesday night against the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't think it's an over-exaggeration. I don't think it's hyperbole to say this is as close to a regular season game as you probably will yeah. ever see in the preseason. Memphis absolutely wanted to win this game. The Magic desperately wanted to win this game. And they did win this game, as a matter of fact. Uh, we're going to talk about just kind of the quarter-by-quarter -quarter breakdown um, on our preseason recap that we're going to release on Monday. We'll record that Sunday night. Um, but we we can't not talk about this game. Like this game yeah. was just absolutely incredible. It's no secret the Magic have not been getting off to great starts uh, through the first three preseason games. Um, and in in this game, just just literally came out guns blazing. Great start uh, to the first quarter. We're honestly blowing out the Grizzlies in the first quarter. I believe they were up by as much as eighteen. Now Memphis, you know, the second seed in the West last year. Of course, at some point they're going to close the gap. And then this game became not about the magic blowing out the Memphis Grizzlies. I, I got to tell you, Luke, I'm watching this game and down the stretch, I'm rooting for Memphis to tie the game up. I'm rooting for Memphis to take the lead because I want to see how this, because the game doesn't mean anything ultimately. Yeah, I want to see how this roster responds to being in a pressure situation at home with a great crowd against yeah. a great young hungry team in the Memphis Grizzlies. And we got everything that we could ask for in this game and more, specifically out of Franz, Wendell, Paolo Bancaro. Like I tweeted out, there was a play. Um, I think it was Franz had the ball. He kicks it out to Wendell. Then Wendell finds Paolo cutting to the basket. Paolo has this acrobatic reverse layup finish. And I'm like, that's your front court for the next 10 years, folks. We've been mm. through some things, but like that is just proof that good things happen to good people. <laughs> what were your thoughts on this Memphis game, Luke? I could talk about it all day. I knew that Memphis was was 
gunning to win this game when I see a camera shot cut to jaw, just uh, no pun intended, jawing at Cole just incessantly. The dude wouldn't shut up. I and think, I was like, I know a lot of people love jaw. I'm off the jaw train. Dude annoys me. There's a lot of people that Great say that like, have started annoys to say the that. crap out of me. He is annoying. Um, very, very great player. Great player. Like Fan- phenomenal. And and honestly, I was ha- like, I was, I was like, wow, Jaw's actually talking. It it's a respect thing for me. I think like that Jaw is putting that much energy into uh, talking to a Magic team that finished as badly as they did last year in a preseason game. Dude was mad. And I think I saw like I read the lips like you got me effed up like you don't know me like that sort of thing. I was like, this is great. Well, John this messed awesome. around and found out. Yeah, he he. Listen, he met Franz Wagner near the end of the game. Go to Brandon Steel. Clark, yes, sir. So, ah, uh, listen, I think this team is a lot of fun. Like you said, you cannot pay enough money for situations late game like that in a preseason game. This is a team that needs it. They need experience. There's some of your experience. You said it. Like they were playing their guys. Their trio plays 32 minutes each of them. I'm pretty sure. Let me let me let me double check. But yeah, so uh, Dylan Brooks. Jaw and Desmond Bain all play 32 minutes. Uh, Desmond Bain gave the Magic really all they could handle, but Dylan Brooks, uh, as he often does, struggled a little bit with you know his his efficiencies, a little hot and cold, kind of streaky. You know, you hold him to four of 13 from the floor, uh, one of 16 from three. They just did a lot of really great things. Terrence Ross was getting to the free throw line, shot six of them. Paolo get to the free throw line, which is obviously becoming a normal C for sure. Shot five free throws and made all of them. T. Ross made five out of six. Like filling. Why do stat people sheet. like Terrence had a late three point? Like he got fouled on a three attempt. Why do people continue to like jump to contest Terrence's threes? He, in terms of like contested three point shooters, he's one of the least blocked players in the league. And it's just like whenever you contest him, it's like there's a 50 50 chance you're going to foul him. I don't yeah. know why people continue to jump with Terrence, but man yeah yeah i mean it's it was a lot of fun it was a fun game i mean like you said like if you want that's the closest you're going to get to a regular season experience i'd say that like it didn't feel post season gamey to me but it was it was close like in terms of just what we saw in terms of the intensity jaw just getting like the magic got under his skin i don't know what cole was saying to him but you know Cole talks crazy, so I'm sure. I'm sure that there were some things being thrown around out there. I don't know if they were your mama jokes like I like, but they were they were saying some things. Yeah, That's Cole was sure. like, yo, Luke's mom, and Jaw was like, oh, word? Like, let's get busy here. <laughs> I just want to, like, break down, like, the last couple of minutes here because to me, like, it was just insane what we were watching unfold in real time. So 3.52 yeah. to go, Magic are up 90 to 91. Um Wendell has a, a cutting dunk to put the Magic up three. Dylan Brooks has a layup, a one-point game again. Terrence Ross comes back. He hits a 17-foot jumper. Magic up three. Conchar hits a three with 2.53 to go. Ties the game up. Wendell Carter with a layup and one. Puts the Magic up three. Desmond Bain comes back the other end. Layup. One-point game. 1.23 to go. Carter, Wendell Carter hits a jump shot from like the left side. I'm like, I can't believe he's taking this shot. Of course it goes in. Magic are up three, 123 to go. Um, let's see what happens then. Uh, Terrence Ross gets fouled, missed the first free throw, makes the next two. Magic are up five. Ja hits a, a layup, gets fouled. That's the and one. This is where he's screaming at Cole. Now it's a two-point game, 37 seconds to go. Braun inbounds the ball. Gets the ball back. That's when he hits the three in Brandon Clark's face and then steals the ball uh, from John Morant, gives it to Terrence Ross. He gets fouled, makes two free throws. Now the Magic are up seven, and essentially the game is over. Yeah. So seeing especially Franz and Wendell just take over the way they did down the stretch, and you just saw the way mm-hmm. that Paolo played the entire game in 27 minutes. He finishes with 17 points, nine rebounds, two assists, shot six of nine from the floor, five of five from the three-point line. The kid is getting better every single game. And just seeing those three really, I mean, essentially lead the team in scoring along with Terrence Ross with 17 points. Just the three of them put the team on their back. Franz, 14 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, 
50% from the floor for the game. Like those three just literally carried us to that victory against the second best team in the Western Conference last year, who was a John Morant injury, arguably from going to the Western Conference finals, absolutely wanted to win this game. You you can't ask for more for a young core. Like you said, this was an invaluable game. You can't pay enough money for experience like this. And as down as we were after the first game, some magic fans, it was the complete opposite end of the spectrum last night with this win against the Grizzlies. Yep. You, uh, you saw both. I mean, jaw as well. What do you have? Like 23 points on 24 shots, like incredible play against jaw there. Um, each team plays 11 players, usually in preseason. You know, obviously, we're seeing them empty the whole bench. Even with one p- preseason game to go, you expect that type of thing out of a final preseason game. It ramps up a little bit in that second to last one, like last night, but it just felt crazy. And I'm excited to see the Cavs, what they roll out against the Magic on Friday. Mitchell's been playing heavy minutes for preseason. They're trying to get him acclimated. I'm I'm really excited to to see what's what's to come for the the team, you know, obviously on Friday. And then as we go into the season, I I was one of those people that after that first preseason game, I right like I I overreacted for sure. And I was just you don't like say. Man. Luke overreacting? <laughs> come on, bro. Never. All right, yeah. Yeah, I know. Death taxes me <laughs> overreacting. And Aaron's Ross uh, getting out on threes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So but it was uh it was it was a lot of a lot of fun for sure. A couple of guys I want to ask you like really quickly about before we get to Terrence Ross. Caleb Houston last night, 13 points, five of six from the floor. The second round pick, mm. the rookie. Yeah, I mean, he's doing what you brought him to do. Three of four from three. I, like you know immediately we knew like this is where he can contribute. Just knock down your three. Knock down the three ball. Another thing, we did not see Devin Kennedy last night. We've talked about it. We don't know. Like, I feel like there's a lot of dialogues that happen and hypotheticals that happen because we just talk ourselves into it. Um, I I feel like a couple seasons ago, it was Evan Fournier, uh, like three seasons ago, maybe. Like, we talked about on the pod, like him getting traded, him getting traded, him getting traded. And then I looked at you and I was like, are we just building this narrative? Like, is this... Like, are we just doing this amongst ourselves and it's not even a conversation? We've just been saying this. We've been assuming it. We've been doing the same with, you know, Houston and Kennedy. But honestly, after last night, you know, we've made it a head-to-head thing. I I think it is. And I think that we'll see how Friday goes. Maybe Houston doesn't play Friday and Kennedy does. Or I don't know. Or maybe neither of them play because it's the final and they're going to final game of the preseason. I'm interested. I need another game to see what they do with the rotations. But keep an eye out on what the Magic do with Devin Kennedy. It might be nothing, but he didn't play a minute. So we'll see. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, I hope I hope that nothing has happened before uh, the next time that we record on Sunday because the Magic do have to make that decision like within the next week before the regular right. season starts. You can carry up to 15 players on the roster right now. They have 16. And let's just go down the list really quickly in terms of like, Somebody has to get traded or waived, right? Jonathan Isaac. No. Markel. No. Wendell, please. Gary Harris. No. <laughs> no. Terrence Ross. Now, Terrence Ross was a question, but with Gary Harris going down, Jalen Suggs going down, and now we've seen him implemented into the starting lineup the last couple of preseason games. And if he's shooting like he's shooting, you need shooting. It's the same thing you talked about with resigning Gary. You needed Gary because you needed shooting. Terrence Ross, rejuvenated to say the least. And crushing it next. And I like for what you could trade Terrence for right now, um, I would just rather have what Terrence Ross has over I'd rather have Kennedy. A, yep. For sure. Paolo Bancaro next. Mohamed no. Bamba. No. Jalen Suggs. Mm-mm. Not even gonna ask about Franz. Cole Anthony, no. Shuma Okiki, no. RJ Hampton's looked a lot better. I'm gonna say no. Yeah. The next no. guy I was gonna ask you about Bull Bull. Nah, that guy's here. Bull Bull, like legitimately the last two fourth fourth quarters has shown us some like legitimate things. Like I Mm -hmm. think he hit a he had a like a block or a rebound that led to him hitting a three in the corner. Like he made the assist the play before and then ran out and hit a contested corner three. I think it put the magic up by like eleven at that point. It felt like one of the plays at the game. Like 
Bull Bull is legitimately showing things for the Magic and is showing why so many people are excited about him. Mo Wagner? No. No. And then Caleb Houston. Like, Caleb Houston looks really good right now. They've you know committed $4 million guaranteed to Caleb Houston. Devin Kennedy is not... His contract does not get fully um, guaranteed until uh, January. So, it, it sucks. I know a lot of people like Devin Kennedy. I really like Devin Kennedy. He's a great shooter. He is a great dude. He's a great dude to have on, on the roster and in the locker room. Uh, but unfortunately, it just seems like he's probably the odd man out. But we're going to find out in the guy. next week here. We could be um, totally wrong about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, great guy. Um, but I just, I, the writing's on the wall for me. I, I mean, like you said, you went down the list. I, I think it's pretty easy to put it together. Unless there's something I'm missing in the magic, like there's something I'm totally missing um, in a way that he ends up on this roster come regular season. I just don't, I don't see it. Wish him the best, but I, I really think it's going to be him. All right, Luke, let's get to our interview with Terrence Ross. All right, Orlando Magic fans, we are now joined by a very special guest. Uh, you may know him better as the Human Torch shooting guard for the Orlando Magic, Terrence Ross. Terrence, what's up, man? Thanks for joining the show. So, oh, guys, appreciate this. Yeah, man, we're excited. We've been uh, thinking about this all day. Excited to talk <laughs> with our boy Terrence Ross, man. We wanted to start talking about, so we're recording this uh, Wednesday night, fresh off the preseason victory over the Memphis Grizzlies last night. Terrence, first of all, the crowd in Amway was rocking last night, and it was it really had a regular season vibe to it. Yeah. Um, what 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 was your you know your feeling throughout that game and seeing like the young trio, Paolo, Wendell, Franz, kind of make those plays down the stretch to help you guys win that game? Um, it was good, man. It was a great feeling to be back. I felt like you know we played, we started the season or preseason on the road, so. Uh, it was just one of those special moments to be back in front of the crowd, back in front of, you know, the family, fans, all that. So, uh, I mean, it was good. We're coming up. We came off. We're coming off a win. So we felt good uh, going into this game, is, you know, especially going out to Memphis and losing that one. Uh, it was definitely like, you know, a little grudge match. And would you say, Terrence, like in preseason as a whole, obviously we want to talk about this game maybe a little bit mm -hmm. more, but like, would you say as a, as a vet in this league in terms of preseason, is it harder to get up for preseason games or does it get easier as the preseason goes on where you get like to these like dress rehearsal type of games that you have like last night yeah. and in front of fans and stuff? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you know, the first ones are pretty much like the first game is pretty, and you know, the hurricane, we kind of missed a couple of days yes. in between that. So it was kind of like just getting the rust off that first game. But after that, we kind of, we kind of, you know, picked the pace up. And it, I mean, the good thing about it was, you know, this summer we had a ton of guys in, you know, so we got to work out with each other. We got to learn the lingo, uh, you know, kind of just understand what coach wants. So I think that helped a lot with the two days missing. But after that, man, the first game getting a little bit of rust. And then the second game, you know, we were taking off every game we've been approving and, you know, the young guy's been balling. You know, Franz coming off, you know, playing FIBA. And then Wendell Hags coming off a big year. And, uh, you know, getting the number one pick with Paolo. Like, it it all is starting to come together. And I think once we started seeing, like, the positives of how we're supposed to play and what we're, you know, buying into, it's, just, it's becoming easier. And um, now, like, even last night, the first quarter we played was, like, to me, some of the best basketball we played in, like, the last couple of years. So that type of, you know, confirmation that hey you know we're doing the right things and this is how it can look when we you know all go for it and we're all doing the same thing so it was a good indication of you know what we can do this year obviously Terrence you know you've been this is now your sixth year with the Magic you know, obviously you know after being traded from Toronto and you know you've seen some success here you know 2018-2019 the franchise made it back to the playoffs for the first time in a really long time and you guys made it to the postseason two straight years but like you mentioned, that first quarter last night, especially in this preseason, is like the highest level basketball that we've seen this group particularly play so far. W what do you like when you envision the the future and like the ceiling of this team? What do you take from that first quarter last night? Like, do you see like a really bright future for this current young squad? No, for sure. And I mean, it's not it's it's for sure the players. But even like Coach Mose, man, like uh, the adjustments he's made from last year to this year have like just like little tweaks here and there have already made like a world of difference. Like the biggest thing that, you know, we kind of got into last or this summer was just like we got to put more pressure on the rim. And I think with all the adjustments that he's made to do that, like it's making everything flow a thousand times better. So uh, 
just taking that and then the young guys coming in and just kind of playing through that. And you can see everybody's just moving on the court. And that's like the most movement we had as a unit since I've been here, even with, you know, the old squad, like this was, that was a good indication, like how this game should be played. And it's, it, we have so much length and so much height and so much size that like, we could all can set screen ropes to the basket. We could all put the jump shot up. We can all do so many different things that it makes the game so much easier to play. So uh, it's been fun, especially like that first quarter, like we even coming out of the game, like the first unit was like, yo, that was fun. Like, we that was a good way to play like you know everybody kind of saw that and now it's kind of kind of like if anything gets rough during the season we can always look back to this preseason game of like the standard of what we're going to do yeah and you, you know you talk about just like how much fun you guys are having the, the first quarter um obviously we can feel it like i was watching mm-hmm. from home and i could could feel it we have a uh, our boy manny who who does some of our clips for our show and he's in australia and yeah. and he texts us and he was like, man, like the Amway looks good. Um, right, yeah. and, and it was, it, it's, it's nice. Like we could tell it no matter where we are, we can tell that it's good now. And it's nice to know that like that preseason game, you know, like you said, to look, you know, have that to really look at, like, who can we be as a team? And I, you know, if, if that's how y'all can look in a preseason game right now, as young as the team is, how's game 40 or 50 going to look like this yeah. team could be making noise and getting even better with, with chemistry and things like that. Do you, you know, talk about, I, I guess, really Franz, he goes to Eurobasket and the whole team is paying attention to Franz. And I'm sure, cause we all were. And then Franz comes back and, and Jonathan said this, I uh, hope he's okay with me sharing this on air. He mm-hmm. said that at media day, you saw Franz and you saw like just confidence through the roof, even at media day. Mm-hmm. Whereas like Franz is a guy much like Markel in our opinion, where it's like they can take over a game and we don't know if they know the potential they have to like do that. Like Fultz, obviously he's getting way better at, you know, knowing where he can get to his spots. Franz, we've just been like, man, he needs to demand the ball and just get the ball. We saw that in the final, you know, in the final stretch there, he hits that big three. He gets a steal on jaw. <laughs> he, he he looked incredible and is doing finally, like, obviously it's only been a year, but he's been doing what we've wanted to do since like a quarter of the way through last season in just a preseason game. Can you talk to me about Franz also, Terrence, if you mm-hmm. are willing to let us know? Yeah. Was that the play all along with Franz? Like, was that you guys are in the timeout? Was, was Franz a guy that you guys wanted to end up with the ball for that shot? No, for sure. Like, yeah, man, going back to like when Franz got drafted, um, you know, he, we we knew he was a good player. And, you know, at Michigan, it was just like even when we drafted him, I looked up his highlights and, and all it was is just kind of like cutting spot up. So it was just like, OK, he's a typical like, you know, slasher type guy. But even in summer league, you didn't really see much of him, you know, doing what he does now. And then when he gets to camp, like it was like we kind of. I kind of I realized like right away I was like oh this kid's good like he has a good feel with the handle he come off the pick and roll he has great footwork like it was so many things I'm just like he has such a pro game already that like this is the perfect style of basketball for him and you can see it now like and I I think that first year gave him a lot of confidence and then he played on top of that going into you know FIBA balls out comes like a national icon out there so like he's just you can just see it like he's he's playing so much better than every previous day. Like he gets better every day. And then coming into camp, you can just tell like, like he looks confident. He's, he has his regimen down. He can see him like he's getting bigger in the gym. Like he's, it's all coming together. And I, last night, of course, like that's how we went in the play. Like we get the ball into our best player's hands and we let him go. Like, and he made a play and everything he did was with confidence. Like he had, we all have so much confidence in him that it's, I think it's helping him just go, like, just go. Because, bro, like, he's that dude that can – he can put it on the deck. He can do something. He makes the right pass. He threw some lobs to Wendell last night. Like, he has great vision. Like, he's a big point guard. He's a point forward. And he's going to have to play like that for us to be successful. And I think he knows that. And he's bringing it every day. Terrence, I can't tell you, like, how excited you get me whenever you talk about this young team. (laughs) You've been been doing it all summer, right? Like, especially, like, after, you know, the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about this at Media Day. Um, but I just wanted to ask you, like, what was your thought process? Because we know, like, at the end of last season, you weren't really sure what your future held. But mm-hmm. like you said, getting the number one pick changes a lot of things. And Absolutely. as you just kind of look down this young roster, like, what what really gets you excited about this team? Um, I mean, honestly, it's just 
they're young and they're really good. Um, they're really good. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, this is the first time, like, I've been on older teams, and this is probably one of the younger teams I've been on. But at the end of the day, you can always recognize, like, potential and talent. And if you you can just see how guys work, you can see the progression of that. And right now is, like, one of the, the best young teams I've seen where, like, a lot of guys are getting good across the board. Right? Like, we have guys like Wendell to, like, uh, uh, Franz. Like, we have Paolo now. Like, RJ's getting better. Mobamba is turned into a beast. Like, there's so many guys that are just getting better across the board that it's like, wow. Like, you can start to see the pieces come together. And now, like, looking at this, like, training camp is a perfect indication of, like, recognizing, hey, this team could be special. We have the talent. We have the length. We have the size. I mean, it's just – it would be a shame for us to not go out there with our arms out every day because we have you – know, between Bobo, Mobamba, <laughs> Wendell. Like, we can That's be the whole such – and that's, that's what I'm saying. It's the whole court. Like last night was great because that was the, they were the number two team in the West last year. And jaw, you see what jaw does. Like he's going to get to his, to his things and he's going to finish around the basket. But like, we made it real tough on him to get going. Like we beat him up every single time he came to the hoop. And it was just like, that's how we have to play every night. So if we can do that against the number two team in the West, like, when they wanted to win that game, when they wanted like, to win the game, like Desmond still went out there and put up 30, but we made him work. We've made so many guys, you know, uncomfortable with our size and our length and just how we're you know flying around the court like it's a good sign man that's it's a fun way to play basketball um I mean we're having fun doing it at what point last night did you look around and say Memphis wants to win this game like they played Terrence they played their trio their top three guys 32 minutes the most of anybody on their team last night at what point i mean we saw jaw saying stuff to cole i'm sure mm-hmm. jaw was saying stuff to everybody but yeah. what what <laughs> at what point did you look around you're like oh they th- this isn't just a preseason game like these are this is a young memphis is a young roster much like oh, orlando sure. there's mm-hmm. a bunch of competitive dudes that are young and haven't lost like their fire at all for the nba and just playing every night and even preseason at what point did you realize like they, they want to win I mean, we set the tone. So we set the tone from the jump of how we wanted to play. And we got up to like, what was like, what, 10 point lead early, like 15 point lead. Like they were, we put them on their backs early to let them know, like, this ain't just going to be a preseason game. It's not going to be like the first preseason game. We're going to come out here. We're we're playing better than we were three games ago. So, and it was more about us, about how, what we wanted to do. So it didn't matter if they were trying to win a game or they're just going to roll over. I think we were going to play how we played last night. And that was for a reason because we're working on us more than focusing about, you know, what any other team is doing. So uh, I think once they kind of recognize that, it, it turned into a serious match. You know how it is. Like, you know, when you go out there playing friendly one-on-one with your homies and next, you know, you guys are playing a series of seven trying to, because it's that competitive nature. And um, I think we just set the tone early. And then from there, you know, they, they try to fight it. I know what you're talking about, Terrence, playing to the death in the driveway. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I, I know how it goes, <laughs> bro. There's no, no easy thing. It starts with – you can start with shots, leading to horse, leading to first to three, and then next you know, you know, you're drenched That's right. Sweat. Then you're swinging on your boy, you know? It's bad. Not like yeah. Draymond kind of swinging on your boy, but we don't have to, oh, worry oh, to really get that into was, that. That's crazy. We don't I have mean, to get into that. <laughs> that's such a weird thing. Such a weird thing. Very, very strange. Well, Terrence, I wanted to ask you because we, we've seen you – the last couple of games here in the preseason starting, which just your you know, first you know, five years with the Magic, most of the time, you know, you've come off the bench, you know, should have won six man of the year in 2018, mm-hmm. 2019. That's just my personal opinion. Should have set the record for, you know, most sure. players ever coming off the bench. You know, that's that's my mm-hmm. opinion. I think who who was it? Wayne Ellington that year that I think was was that's like, what, yeah like starting some games, but that's a whole nother conversation. But mm-hmm. has there been any, you know, conversation about you starting this year and how do you, what do you think about that role? I mean, uh, I know starting the season, you know, most kind of say like, we want to try to put out as many different lineups as we can and see what works, see what doesn't see, you know, where we can get better at. Um, but I mean, he told me I was going to start, I think the second game, but after that, I think, you know, with Jalen getting hurt, I think they've been just mixing it up and just putting in and out. So who knows? I mean, we, we're 3-0. and So, I mean, that's a good sign. Um, but we'll see, man. I know, you know, the coaches have their own game plans and they they think about, you know, the first unit, second unit, how to balance things out. So we're, we're going to we're gonna see. I mean, I'm so much for, like, you know, whatever the coach wants, I'm, I'm going to go in there and do it. So uh, we'll see, man. We'll see. 
I mean, you, you look comfortable out there too. It took a, a little bit for like, I, I was watching the game and I was like, can we, can Terrence get more touches here at the beginning? Like, I, I'd love to see that because it's not a, a role that you have, like Jonathan and I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, if I had to ask you how many games with the Magic has T. Ross started? Because he talked about Terrence might be starting this year. I was like, I don't know. Because look at how like how many do you think? And okay. he guessed and it was wrong. And I was like, it's it's lower than that. It's a lot lower. But it also just like it goes into the fact of what you said. Like I'll do whatever coach is about. Uh, whatever he thinks works, whatever, you know, whatever works, I'll do it. And like you said, last night, y'all look good. You got the ball. Mm-hmm. You started going. Obviously, we know how you ended that game too. Um, you know, shooting very well last night. So I, I guess kind of, are you uh I, I want to kind of gear towards preseason here too. You guys obviously have a game coming up on Friday mm-hmm. against the Cavs, who also are a young team. They made a lot of noise last year, kind of dropped off near the end, but um, but we know what their potential is. They've mm-hmm. already got, you know, Mitchell playing 25 plus minutes in preseason, even by game two, I think. So how do you prep for for teams like that you don't know much about? Like I guess like that preseason prep for for teams like that that are just young and, and hungry like Memphis and Cleveland. I mean, like it's like we said, it's it's a preseason thing, and right now we're in the mindset of you know we focusing on us. Um, we know that they got you know new pieces and they got you know their their best squad they've had in some time, but yeah, I mean we're worried about us. Like we're gonna go out there still try to play our brand of defense, try to you know focus on what we need to get better at. And focus on those principles because at the end of the day, you know, those are going to be the things that are going to help us down the line. Um, I mean, of course, during the year when things change and you're making the push, you know, for the playoffs or whatever that, you know, there's always different scouts, you adjust lines, all that type of stuff. But right now we're working on, you know, the fundamentals of what's going to make us good. Um, just like the simple things. So if we can control the simple things, that should still put us in a position to go out and compete and win any game. So, uh, I think that's probably going to be the approach, you know, at least for the next few games. Terrence, you mentioned a few minutes ago, just like talking about like the big difference, even with Moe's and mm-hmm. just like some of the, the adjustments that he's made from last year to this season. Can you just talk about what some of those adjustments have been? Yeah. Um, offense, the offense, he, he, we studied a lot of kind of where our office is kind of slowing down at. And I think, just with the little changes and just like the mindset of what we're or what we're trying to do this season has changed like the way everybody's playing. Like there's a rule for everybody to roll. I don't even want to say too much because I don't want to scout this, but like all right, we fair have, enough. Yeah, we have like certain <laughs> rules that we that we, you know, we're living by this year. And the with the whole purpose of getting more possessions, getting, you know, second chance points as well as stopping transition and we're buying into it. So you can kind of see like the first game, we were kind of trying to break old habits. Second game, we're getting better. Third game, we're getting better. Last game was like a really good version of what it's supposed to look like. So it's been amazing. Like it's been fun. Like it's a, uh, cause you know, the game changes so often. Like when I first got into the league, we used to have two bigs on the court and now it, everybody's literally uh, like behind the three. So uh, the game changes, and I think, you know, just like with anything, you have to change with it. And uh, this is just a a good understanding of, you know, what we need to do. A few weeks ago, Markel Fultz tweeted something that I want your opinion on. Um, Let's go. He, he tweeted out, and all he said was, uh, four seed with a the devil emoji smiling, right? Mm-hmm. Did you see it when, like, did you see him tweet that? And if you did, like... What was your your genuine just reaction to to Markel putting that out there? I mean, not, you don't hear a lot of players talk mm-hmm. about you know, a speed a seed specifically, and yeah. you know they know how the social media works, right? No, like absolutely. If the, if, the, if the Magic don't meet those expectations or even come close, he's going to have a lot of trolls in his mentions. I don't think Markel cares about trolls at this point no. in his career. He no, knows how sure. that goes. But yeah. yeah, what was your reaction to that? I mean, this I'm, first time I'm actually even hearing of it. Um, I didn't even know he tweeted that, but no, I. <laughs> But that, I mean, that's kind of what my mindset going into is like, yo, like we should be able to get to where we want to go. And it's like, Mm. yeah, like for me, when I had, like when we drafted Apollo, we see Franz getting better. We're seeing Wendell come back. We're seeing G G Harris getting signed again. Like you just kind of realize like what we're capable of and kind of how the East was last year. Like 
there's no telling how these teams are going to play out. Like everybody thought Brooklyn was going to win the championship. They get bounced, and it's like, all right, what next? And then it's just nobody expected to go how you go. Like, nobody can predict what's going to happen. That's every season. Nobody's ever right with their preseason guesses, like, ever. So we just use this as fuel to, to get to where we want to go. And I think that we have a really good squad. Like, we have a really good squad. Everybody put in a lot of work over the summer. You can see it. Everybody's in the gym. You know, coaches around. It's most people I've ever seen in one summer. So it's like the confidence that we have behind the work we put in is is refreshing. And yeah, our mindset is to, you know, break the barriers that we've been set before. It's like we're going to create a new standard. And I think everybody here is just hungry for that. Terrence, I want to switch gears a little bit here. In the past, not to you know bring up old things, but you've been known as a little bit of a leaker. You know, you yeah. leaked the the city court. You know, a few seasons ago. Yeah. Um, have you seen the leak of allegedly? I'm putting up quotations here mm. of this year's city jerseys. Have you seen them yet? Yeah. Um. Actually, we took photo. Sh- yeah, we had a photo shoots with them today. Actually, I put okay. them on. I was walking Thoughts. around. Thoughts. Be it's honest. Bad. You can it's be honest. Bad. It's not bad. No, I mean, okay. it's cool. I mean, <laughs> we're. I mean, because hmm. I wasn't thrilled about last year's jersey. We oh, we we we've heard, yeah. Or, orange and orange and gray, like that yeah. pewter color gray. An- no, anthracite gray. gray as yeah, they say. anthracite gray. Yeah, oh thanks, my Nike. Gosh, that's oh yeah. Thank <laughs> you. It's just like sometimes you just feel like you guys must have got to our team last. And it must have been right before the season because it was like it's hardly any thought into it. Like they just put, okay, ORL, gray, orange, next. And it's just like, <laughs> come on, bro. Like, I don't know. But this year is – this one's – it's not bad. It's the, – the I don't want to – add a one out of ten. like that? It's – it's it's kind of, it reminds me of like New Orleans a little bit. Just That's what I said. That's what we've heard. Yeah. We've heard yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we've been saying that. We were saying that today. With, it's not bad. It's out of ten – I give it a seven. It's sleek. So okay. I guess it's whatever. It's not bad. What about the what about the statement jerseys? Like the the new black with the with the blue pin trice with the stars down the side. Yeah. Oh, I, I love miss, those. Don't hurt me, bad. Terrence. I love it, those. It's not bad. It's not bad. My favorite jersey that I've worn since I've been here was, I think, two seasons ago. It was like the white with like the, the urn. blue star. Yeah. Yeah, Favorite those jersey. were fire. Because it, it kind of like reminiscent of like the early 2000s. So I was like, these are these are sick. But like since then, everything's just been pinstripe this, change the color, pinstripe this. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I get it. It's it's original. Oh, and the blue pinstripes that we had. The same 2018, year, or, 2019. 2018. Very, yes. very classic. Like Best classic, jersey classic. of all time. Yeah, that was classic. But like other than that, like they either take it too far or they just don't take it far enough. Do you put any thought into like, oh man, I hope, I hope the city jersey is good this year. Or like, do you spend any time thinking about that? And if you do, what, what were you hoping, I guess, or what do you hope every year for like a style that maybe you haven't gotten to this point? Well, I mean, I'm cool with my equipment manager, me and my equipment manager, Jacob Diamond are like this. So he Jake. lets me know. Yeah. Jake lets me know everything that's going on a couple years in advance. Like he let us know. Yeah like about all these jerseys. So, and sometimes we have like a, maybe like a picture of it. So give us an idea, but mm-hmm. I wasn't really concerned until, yeah. Until those orange and gray, pewter color gray <laughs> came out. Like after that, every year has been like, please, what's next? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But that this year's isn't, isn't bad. It isn't bad. Terrence, there's something I've been wanting to ask you for a long time. And it's so cool that we get to do the pod and have guys like you on because just dumb things that I think about that nobody mm-hmm. else thinks about, I get yeah. to ask you now. So you hit a big <laughs> shot. I think it was it was against Philadelphia. I don't remember if you guys were on uh, on the road or at home, but you hit the shot. Philadelphia calls a timeout. You come down the other end of the floor. You scream and you mm. slap both of your thighs harder than I've ever seen any human <laughs> yeah. being in the world. I just want to know how bad that hurt. Like I had pads on. I had pads. Okay, on. That's all right, why I did all it. right. That's why okay. I did, That's why I did it. Yeah. yeah, I wore like, I the extra pads on the on the tights, so I was fine. My hands hurt, but I was fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Um, as far as I know, I already asked you like what you mm. think about four seed. I I I. I so badly, Terrence, want you yeah. to put like a, it, I don't know if it's a seed or if it's like better no than play play, like yeah. yeah play in is that is that the the goal like going into the season for you for me for me that should be 
floor. Like we should be yeah. getting into playing. Like, do you do you like the play in? I like, do like the concept. Yeah, it's it's entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. More basketball during playoff time. Absolutely, it's a March Madness type thing too, right? I like, love it. Yeah, you, you, it's one and done. The better the better team isn't always gonna win for sure, and that's why if if the Cinderella if Orlando, teams. Yeah, if Orlando was was to get there, you all of a sudden win nine ten matchup, then you go on and you you're you know fighting for that mm-hmm. seven. It's like anything can happen, and yeah. it just it's I incredible. It. I mean, I, I, yeah, it took some getting not even took some getting used to, but when they first approached this, because they 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 approached this, I think early before the season before, like early in that season, saying like, hey, we're gonna do a plan, like we're thinking about it, yada yada. And at first, I felt like the the room was a little skeptical with the guys. They're like, eh, do we really want to do that? But I think after they saw how the first one went and how successful it was and how entertaining it was, it it was kind of like, yeah, for sure. Like, why not? Do you think there needs to be some criteria? Like, if you're, you know, 9 or 10, you need to be within X amount of games. Like, last year, you know, we saw, I think in the West, it was teams that were like 8 or 10 games back. Like you know, playing like for the plan. Do you think there needs to be any criteria like that, or you're just good with you know nine and ten playing you know seven and eight? No, I, I mean I'm I'm good with that just because it's it's different because like you still gotta take into account of like the uh, certain teams will be with worse records will be the good team and have like a better record against some teams than the others. So all that to me plays in, and that just adds for more drama. So I mean that's. That's literally why it's like the best part of the season sometimes, like seeing who the Cinderella team is gonna be. That's why I'm kind of the plane's growing on me, because then you can take that Cinderella team that literally had no shot and they can ride momentum clear into like maybe second round. So it's just I don't know, it adds that layer of like unpredictability. What is the kind of I, I, we've talked about team goals. Mm. As far as personal, uh, you, a lot of vets don't get asked this question yeah. and I honestly wish they would um, because young players get it every year coming out of mm-hmm. the draft first year after their first year. What is your personal, like do you have any personal achievements that you want this year, whether it be uh, a certain efficiency or three pointers made or field goals, made, like, or, you know, a six man of the year, if you end up being six man, like do you have any preset goals going into the season or are you kind of just let's just um, make the play in? No, I, I did. My whole goal is just being more efficient. Be more efficient with like less touches because I feel like when that, when I, if I can do that, then like with the first unit, when I play with the first unit, that kind of gives them a little bit more space to play. Even mm-hmm. let's say if I don't hit the first two shots, like it still commands respect that I'm out there because it, everybody so knows much, you can shoot. Yeah. So it kind of takes people like last night, you know, I'm in the corner and the guys are like, like face guarding me when the ball's on the other side of the court. So it's just like little things like that help because now sometimes like if we have somebody else in, they're clogging that paint and they're using like this weird shift. So uh, being more efficient, I feel like is going to open that up for like some of those guys like Franz and, and, and Markel Mm -hmm. and like God and like, and Cole. So it, I feel like that helps in itself. That, that's how I am in uh, NBA 2K. You know, I exactly. got my big, I can shoot. They face guard me the whole time. I got to cut fine. if I want to get open. It's annoying. Yeah. Like, I can't hit contested shots because 2K doesn't believe in hitting contested shots. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I resonate. Absolutely. No, that's how I am, bro. Don't, <laughs> don't even try. I'm, I'm 2K. My build is uh, like a seven foot two back to the basket big. Yeah. I, know, I don't yeah. even know how to shoot. Just get rebounds. Yeah. <laughs> Terrence, obviously you were here the last time that the, you know, the team had you know, a lot of success in, in 2018, 2019. And that game three in Orlando, um, I, I don't, Kevin wasn't there, but Luke and I were in the building for that. Mm-hmm. And the energy in there was just like ridiculous, but there was like a real excitement in the city around the team. Now there's a different level of excitement around the team. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you feel like, obviously we, we have had a feeling that that, previous group had a ceiling to it you know like yeah you guys at best were only going to go so far in the playoffs and now there's like a a hope of like a a really higher ceiling with this team do you being here so long do you notice that at all do you feel that i mean it's i mean you definitely feel that there's a lot of potential and like that's the thing like when you have older guys you kind of know what their capabilities are but when you have younger guys coming in it's kind of it's kind of a little more hard to, you know, predict how far they can take it. So right now we're in that very beginning, like early stages. 
so yeah, like the future looks bright and everybody's had all this optimism for, you know, all these young guys to, to develop and keep going and going, but it's going to be up to them to see how much they want to push it. So we're in a good position to see like, Hey, like how far you guys want it, how much you guys want. And I think this year will be a good indication of like to give these guys a taste of like, all right, last year we were sorry, but next year going forward, I mean, like, we not had, wrong. yeah, we had, we have a better year. And then if we keep building the way we're building, I think going forward, that is going to create like, you know, more of that hunger to get them over the hump. So it's a good, it's a good start. And like, it's, it's hard to say like what the future holds because who knows, but definitely a really solid start. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we're all uh, very interested, obviously, to see what is, is happening with, with the team this year, the progress y'all are making. Mm-hmm. Would you say, you know, going into this season, obviously, like Jonathan said, a lot of excitement. If you had to pinpoint maybe the most excitement you had going into a season with the Magic this year, can you tell us which season it was? Hmm. Um. Yeah, this year. This year. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's just so much to look forward to. Like, we just yeah. got the number one pick. We have former, you know, first-round pick really coming into his own. We have a ton of first-round picks. And they're all like getting better. Like everybody from Cole, Jalen, Franz, Mo. Like, I mean, we have so many guys that are getting better and better and better. And you're seeing it. Um, it's playing out. Like these guys, we just imagine, you know, who knows what's gonna happen, but just knock on wood, we keep this group together, we keep these that young core, who knows what they can turn into. It's gonna be they could be a part of those like perennial teams four or five years from now who are like the top dogs in the in the East. So uh, that's, you know, fingers crossed. That's what it, hopefully they can take it. But I mean, it's, it's fun. This is definitely one of the like more refreshing, fresh start type of seasons I've had since I've been here. Terrence, you know, you've been with the team for, for quite a while now and, um, you become really a fan favorite over the years. I can't tell you how many people I've seen with you know tweets, like sign T Ross to a lifetime mm-hmm. contract, like all those <laughs> kinds of things. You know, I'm sure that you thought about it a little bit, you know, this is your, the last year of your contract. Mm-hmm. The off season's a long way away, but have you had any thoughts or like, are you hoping to re-sign in Orlando long term, or have you just not really thought about it all that much yet? Uh, it's so premature that it's who knows, bro. Like who knows? Like it's so much can happen in a year, but um, I mean we'll see. I mean it's right now it's like because I've been through you know, this is not my first time going through like a contract year, so it's it's easier for me to like rest easy and not stress about it the same way I did the first time around. So I'm. I I'm taking everything day to day, like, and it's so much easier to operate that way. So right now it's, it's so, you know, beyond that, like, I'm not even, I'm not worried about it. We haven't even made it to game one of the season yet. So uh, it's easier just to look at it day by day. All right, let's pivot away from basketball now, Terrence. Hmm. Another thing I know that you're a big comic book guy like myself. I know you're a big Spider-Man guy. Yeah. You probably don't know this. You have a, a Miles Morales tattoo on your leg. I do. I took inspiration of that. I have a, a Peter Parker Spider Man tattoo right here on my right bicep. No way. I took yeah. I'll, I'll take yeah. I'll take the I gotta hoodie see off it. for you. I gotta see I'll take it. the hoodie off for you right here. Wow, you so guys didn't got think it you were getting that right there. there. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty close to yours, but I oh, went yeah. Peter Parker instead for of Miles sure. Morales. Yeah, that's and then you so know, dope. you know, I'm I'm about it. About it. We're for life yeah, over here. He's We're for life in. over here. He's but um, what did you think of the the latest Spider Man movie, No Way Home? Man, it, it was good. It was good because for me, I grew up with, you know, Tobey Maguire and like, you know, William Dafoe. So seeing those guys back was full circle for me. Like, did you see full, it in like theaters? Complete. I did. That was the last Marvel movie I saw in theaters. I was like, I got to like go experience this the way I'm supposed to. Like, because right. at home is not the same. So I, I went to theaters for that by myself and um, I loved it. I loved it. I loved all of it, bro. I got to see there's just so many cameos, so many different like marquee moments and just like years worth of Spider-Man that it was cool to see. It felt like, yeah, it felt like a reunion. You know, felt so like I you were a it. kid again. Yeah, bro. It felt great. I loved it. <laughs> is it, is it uh, weird? Uh, obviously, I have no idea. So I'm genuinely curious. You said you yeah. went and saw it in theater. Mm. Is it weird? Like, did you go see it in theaters in Orlando? Like, do you try to do stuff in public maybe where... Like it's not Orlando to where you're not seeing it or do you not really care? You you don't no, mind. I'm, I'm out and about all the time, bro. People see me around all the time. 
I'm yeah. constantly, yeah, I roam around easy, bro. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I see the Deadpool behind you, the poster behind you. Mm-hmm. Obviously, and Deadpool there, right? Like, yeah. The Dead Deadpool Venom. 3 coming it's out. coming out with Hugh Jackman. Yeah. So he said he you... would never do it, and he's doing it. That's literally, like, because, like, I, I, I love I love Marvel. I grew up watching, like, the first Iron Man in theaters. So, like, this whole saga, the whole Infinity War saga, took 10 years to kind of, you know, get through. Mm. And that was a lot. Like, as a fan, that takes a lot out of you. Like, emotionally, like, yeah. it took a lot out of people. <laughs> and then all the content start just rolling out so fast that it was like, I'm, I felt like I was missing things. I felt like stuff was a little diluted with just, like, massive crossovers i'm just like all right now my brain is twisting like i think i'm going to start slowing down there's of course going to be some movies that i watch just to keep up with things but yeah deadpool will probably be the next movie i see in theaters whenever it comes out that could be years from now but like hugh jackman's back 23 2020 wow so that's soon so that means they probably already started they probably done filming already so that means yeah this should be great so that'd be the next movie i see in theaters did you see Spider Man when you went and saw it? Was like, was it a like pretty empty theater, or was it like a packed house? No, it was packed. It was packed. People were cheering. The talking. reaction of that, bro. So when I went and saw, um, when I went and saw Endgame, right? Mm. This dude I went to high school with, like, I went that weekend. He went yeah. that Thursday or whatever when it came out. The next day, he tweets out like, "Oh, I can't believe you know Captain picked up oh, Thor's hammer." God. I was like, "Bro, what the hell?" Yeah. I'm like, yeah. "There's a two week spoiler window." Yeah. When, a, when a movie comes out, you can't do that. So I see the the hammer lifting in the air, and I already know what's coming. Yeah, Captain, it, you know, catches the hammer. Everyone's going crazy. I'm like, yep, that was ruined for I, me. Uh, you know I what I mean? That. I've been waiting so for this I, entire moment. You can ask these guys. I did not look at anything Spider Man for months yeah. leading up to the release of that would, movie. Yeah. Terrence, he wasn't watching trailers. Like we were trying to, we have a group chat, me, him, and Kevin. And yeah. he was like, guys, do not send me a thing. And I know he's serious. I know Jonathan after that, like that scarred him. He talked, he talked oh, about absolutely. it. But he's got the Spider-Man, like he, he's got the tattoos. Yeah. He's got everything, right? So I was like, all right, he's serious. I, I won't spoil. There were so many times where I just want oh, to send I'm him sure. a trailer. But he just it's to hard, just though. to it's hard to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to. I wanted to send it. I really wanted to irritate him. But yeah, but, that that reaction in the movie but, theater, like seeing Andrew Garfield like take off the mask. Yes. I haven't felt that happy since DJ Augustine hit that freaking three and two. <laughs> man. I gotta tell you, I gotta so, tell yeah, you that was I know exactly that was something mean. truly special. The dialogue between those three was was great. Yeah, and then after that, obviously it was us winning the lottery. <laughs> like that, yeah. that night was crazy. That yeah. night was crazy. But uh, but no, Terrence, man, this was a lot of fun, man. We appreciate you joining the show. Mm. Uh, you're a fan favorite. One thing that I, I've always appreciated about you is that, especially like with fans or like especially with the media, you always speak your mind. You're always very candid. You're yeah. you're not so buttoned up and give mm-hmm. these media answers. You speak what's on your mind, man. And we really sure. really appreciate that. We love having you in Orlando, man. And we hope you here. You know, you're here for a long long time. We appreciate you appreciate joining you. the show, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It means a lot, man. The Human Torch on the Six Man Show. That was a lot of fun, Luke. Yeah, man. I mean, we we say it. We said it. I said it with RJ. You know, anytime that you can sit down with these players and just get them in a, a space where you feel like you can be pretty candid, there is nobody as candid as as T. Ross. And just thankful. I mean, we <laughs> we always verify with our guests, like, hey, like, what's your time like? And Terrence on before we start recording was like uh i'm good like we can just go and we did and even after the fact we talked to him for about probably 10 more minutes so terrence just very down to earth very much uh, a man of the people he's a fan favorite for a reason he's the king of the leaks you guys got to hear that did one more time for us told us about the photo shoot you love the guy i mean he he just you can't not like him and just excited that we got to sit down with them and have that conversation. So appreciative to Terrence just taking the time. And again, it was a lot of fun. Luke, I'm just going down the list now. You know, Jonathan Isaac, Terrence Ross, Jalen Suggs, uh, RJ Hampton. We've now had a quarter of the active Orlando Magic roster on the podcast. Still doesn't feel real. Love that. And we're just getting started. Just getting started, baby. All right, folks, just to remind you a couple of things before we go ahead and sign off here. This preseason game on Friday, make sure that you guys come out. Amway was rocking on Tuesday. Let's make it even better on Friday. For those of you that are coming to the game, I'm going to be at Big Storm at 6 o'clock, probably ahead of my seat somewhere around like 6.30, 6.45. 
get everybody all ramped up and riled for the preseason finale. It's going to be a lot of fun. Please come say hello if you see me. And then the season opener, October 19th at Elixir, starting at 630. That is Elixir at 9 West Washington Street, Orlando. We're partnering with the Orlando Magic and Michelob Ultra. That's going to be the season opening watch party again at Elixir. We're going to have $4 16-ounce Michelob Ultra bottles on special. Bo Outlaw Orlando Magic Legend will be there. The Magic are raffling off an autographed basketball. There's going to be a ticket giveaway for opening night versus the Celtics coming up on October 22nd. And then there's going to be trivia during quarter breaks. What more can you ask for, folks? It's going to be a lot of fun. Super excited about this preseason, about the regular season. Ready to just get this season started. It's going to be a lot of fun, folks. Um, But yeah, for Luke Sylvia, this has been Jonathan Osborne. You guys are listening to The Six Man Show, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Sixth Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sixth Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!